Today we're going to talk about the differences with mushroom grains. Um, when we first started off, we basically just had everything use corn. Um, we used feed corn to start off with, which I still personally, I still personally think is better than popping corn. Um, popping corn is made to just pop and be light and fluffy. Uh, feed corn is made to fatten up animals. Um, it's also made as a bait for animals. Uh, so it's, it should have a lot more sugars in it than popping corn. Um, unfortunately, feed corn also has a lot, extra, a lot of extra material in it. So there's more co uh, cobs in it. There's more like stalks and stems in it. Um, and it also just doesn't look as good. Uh, so unfortunately, due to bag appeal, um, we don't use feed corn anymore. Um, we use the popping corn now. Popcorn or corn is probably my favorite grain to grow with. Um, it holds the most amount of moisture. Uh, by weight, it holds usually around 75% moisture. Um, so every pound that you put in, you'll get about one and three quarters pounds out. Um, mushrooms are 90% water by weight. So having more moisture available, you're gonna get bigger or more abundant mushroom yields. Um, corn is also very high in sugars. Uh, there's a reason why we, we all know about high fructose corn syrup and not high fructose oat syrup. Um, it's, it's just really easy to pull all that sugar out of corn. Um, some people do the whole drippy corn thing where they uh, coat the outside of the kernels with sugar, but I personally don't think that it uh, is necessary, especially with how fast corn is regardless. Um, I think that just increases your chances of uh, running into issues later on um, during the grow. So we skip that part for these days. Uh, one of these days we might try it out. Um, corn also breaks up really easily. Uh, with the large grains, you can kind of break them apart so it makes your break and shakes a lot easier than, uh, say, millet. Um, it's not super dense, but it's dense enough to uh, fit in a bag nicely. So, yeah, I really like corn. Um, I definitely recommend it. Uh, after, we, um, after we decided to start making different types of grain, we started using oats for a lot of our stuff. Um, our second variation of all-in-ones was oats. Um, oats are really good. They are easy to hydrate and they hydrate really well. Oats usually holds around 60 to 75% moisture by weight. So it holds a decent amount of moisture. Um, it again is a larger grain, so it breaks apart pretty easily. Uh, it's also easy to check the moisture content in it whenever it's, uh, it's bagged up and already, uh, cooked in the autoclave. Um, it's a difficult grain to mess up. Um, even if, uh, it overhydrates, it had a, it, eh. even if you overhydrate it, it has a husk around it, which kind of contains the seeds. So you don't run into issues with it getting super, uh, super mucky or super dense from all the uh, seeds cracking. Um, so yeah, oats is also a really, really good material to use. Um, it's got plenty of sugars in it. Um, you know, people use oatmeal for breakfast, so it's got a lot of carbs in it. Uh, which is important for mushrooms to be able to uh, grow quickly. Um, the other grain on my left here is rye. Um, rye has a similar shape to oats. It doesn't have a husk on it though, or a hole, um, but it has that same cylindrical shape, which makes it easy to break apart. Uh, it has the same hydration rate as oats, around 60 to 75%, so uh, it, it holds plenty of moisture. I do believe rye has higher sugar content though. Um, rye is a little bit more expensive to get, so if you're growing in large quantities, uh, the oats is gonna be the winner there because you'll save a little bit in the long run um, and you'll probably get about the same amount of yield between the two. Uh, the rye will grow a little bit faster though because the sugar content is there. Um, rye again, is, it's very easy to prep. Uh, it holds water pretty easily. Um, so yeah, rye is probably my second uh, go-to option for when I'm growing personally. Uh, then we've got our round grains. Um, this is Milo. 
Milo is also called sorghum. Um, it comes in white and in red. Uh, we use the red variety because whenever we make our mixed bags, uh, the contrast looks really nice. That's basically the only reason why we use it over the, uh, the white Milo. Um, I prefer Milo over millet because it's not as dense, which makes it easier to break apart whenever you need to do break and shakes. Uh, it holds a lot of moisture in it, um, and it also has a decent amount of carbs to it. Um, moisture rate is usually around 50 to 65 percent. I don't think that it hits the uh, 70 percent mark. Um, so it holds more moisture than millet, um, but not as much as the, uh, the other cereal grains. Um, sorghum is the other type of uh, sugary syrup that you can find. You can find sorghum syrup in, uh, in your grocery store sometimes. Um, so you've got high fructose corn syrup and then you've got sorghum syrup. Um, so yeah, sorghum has a lot of uh, available sugars and available carbohydrates to it. Um, I believe it's also used for brewing beer in some countries. Um, and yeah, it looks really nice. It's got a nice contrast to it. Whenever mycelium's growing on it, obviously with it being a dark grain, the white really pops. Um, so it's, it's a really good grain for being able to look and see what's going on if you're using a questionable uh, genetic material. Um, it'll really show if the mycelium's growing well. Um, and yeah, with the small uh, grains, the break and shake is pretty easy. Um, it's really good for doing grain to grain transfers because you can break everything up into the individual pieces. You can cut the uh, corner of your bag off and then pour it really easily. Um, so yeah, sorghum or milo, very good grain. Uh, the only grain that I don't really like is millet. Um, millet overall just isn't a good grain. Um, it's very small seeds uh, and it has an outer um, husk or hole. Um, the inner part is what holds the moisture and has the, the sugar that, and the nutrients that your mycelium wants. So you're getting a very small amount of actual grain for the bag that you're, you're purchasing or growing in. Um, it also holds very little water. Uh, typically the highest that we'll get from millet is around 40%. Um, so for each bag, each pound that we put in, we might get like a pound and a quarter out of it. So like one and a quarter pounds for each pound that we put in. So it's really not, um, it doesn't have a lot of moisture in it for the mycelium. So mycelium tends to also grow pretty slowly through it. Um, people will say that it has a lot of inoculation points because the grains are round and so they slot into each other. Um, the only issue with that is it's very dense and so you've got a lot more grains for the mycelium to work through. So even though yes, the mycelium has more places to go out from, you've got more places for it to go out to. So it kind of counteracts itself there. Um, and then whenever you factor in that you're getting less uh, sugar content and less uh, nutrients and less moisture, it's just not going to grow as well as other grains. Um, for whatever reason, a lot of younger uh, growers and newer growers uh, gravitate towards millet. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but a lot of the veteran growers also just won't use it for the reasons that I stated. Um, yeah, overall, I don't like millet. I, I never use it if I can avoid it. Um, I would say it's probably good in a mix, um, like adding it to, you know, s uh, some rye or some corn. Um, but as you'll see in a second, Milo would be the better choice for that because it's just a better grain. So our last grain that we sell is our custom mix. Um, we mix oats and Milo together. Um, we get this made at a nearby mill who puts the amounts together for us. They also put a little bit of corn into the bags for us as well, um, just to have little, I guess you could call them like hot spots of sugar for your mycelium to grow into. Um, the 
Oats and the Milo both hold relatively similar amounts of moisture. Um, the reason why we do the Milo and the Oats is because the Oats is pretty uh, cylindrical and so it all slots into one another and then the Milo being round circles kind of fills in the gaps. So you can see this bag is slightly smaller than the oat bag, so it's more dense. So that means that the mycelium will be able to travel between the grains a little bit faster. Um, and then, like I said, the reason why we don't use the millet is because there's not as much sugar in millet compared to Milo. It doesn't hold as much moisture compared to Milo, so uh, that's why we use the two. And then the contrast as well. It looks really nice. Uh, whenever I'm on the internet, if I'm on Reddit, I can see whenever a bag is ours. Um, if somebody has purchased our bag in the past and they're on Reddit and they see this mix, they know that it's from us because we're the only people that, that sell this. Uh, so yeah, that's all the difference, differences between the different grains. Um, if I had to rank our grains, I would say corn, then our mix, then rye, then oats, then milo, and I, I wouldn't even mention millet. Don't buy that. It's not good. Um, we make it great. You'll like it if you buy it from us, but uh, if you buy any of the other grains, you'll like it more. So yeah, that's our different grains.